When Mortal Kombat 1 released on the Nintendo Switch last month, it was met with a biblical torrent of criticism, and that wasn't for no reason. The game performed poorly, it was extremely buggy. Visually, it looked terrible, and it was just not a good look for NetherRealm Studios. But they have since released the patch, so this is gonna be my post-patch review of Mortal Kombat 1 on the Nintendo Switch. Is it worth it now? Stick around to find out. Let's begin our review on the visual side of things. Even after the big 27 gigabyte patch that released on the 11th of October, Mortal Kombat 1 on the Switch still is not the prettiest girl on the block. There seems to be so much going on in the back end of the game that it takes time for the game to load things like skin textures and clothing so sometimes during fight intros you're gonna see a really badly rendered character model just before all the graphics load that was what happened with the infamous picture of Melina that every content creator used in their thumbnails the only parts of the game that actually look pretty good are the close-up shots of the characters during the pre-fight cutscenes where they're talking to each other that is, at least if the graphics are properly rendered. But they look pretty good there, along with some other areas like the character models in the customize mode and the loadout screen in the invasions mode. Speaking of invasions, you're gonna wanna hear what I have to say about that mode, so stay tuned for that. There isn't much to say about the story mode in this game, it's a continuation of the last one. Liu Kang is now the fire god and has the power to create a universe. He recreated the entire cast in an effort to change their destinies, but obviously things go wrong. You go from cutscene to cutscene and from fight to fight, and the story itself is very hammy but it also takes itself seriously at the same time, which is weird. And I don't know if this was intentional, but the voice acting in this game is so overdone, especially Sub-Zero's, who has the most overacted tough guy voice. Now he is gone, and I am Grandmaster. Guide us, yes. Shackle us, no. He sounds like a middle school kid's impression of what an action movie star sounds like. All in all, the story mode is serviceable. Not bad, not terrible, but it does follow a format that I think most fighting game story modes should also follow. The story itself is not going to win any awards, and the Switch version specifically does still suffer from screen tearing and other issues. Now let's get to talking about the Invasions mode. I'm not going to pull my punches here. Invasions mode is absolutely horrible. While playing this mode, I felt like that hamburger review guy. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Playing this mode really did ruin my day because it's a total drain on your soul. It wastes your time and then it asks you to say thank you for doing so. It has disrespected my mother this mode. I think by now you get that I'm not a fan of invasions. It's basically a replacement for the crypt from Mortal Kombat 11 and while I wasn't a fan of that either, MK11's crypt was far superior to invasions. With invasions mode you're dropped on a map that's more like a board game but unlike Monopoly, invasions is not fun. You're tasked with grinding endless matches for little reward like different types of currency in order to buy things that are not that interesting. Occasionally, you're gonna run into a pretty cool skin like Johnny Cage's Indiana Jones, but skins are pretty much the only reason to play Invasions. At least that's the only reason I did, and I can say that it's not fun. While playing matches against the computer in Invasions, the CPU opponent is often buffed with super armor for no reason, and at other times, the stage could be littered with objects that will damage you, again, for no reason, and other times, your character will be doused in something that makes you move in slow motion, making impossible to land your combos again for no reason it does not add to the fun it only adds to the frustration invasions mode in the switch version is also unique in that anytime your internet connection disconnects it triggers a bug that prevents the game from saving anything so if you try for example to change cameos it's not gonna work if you unlock a key item like Madame Bo's key, which is necessary to progress, you will have it, but the game will not notify you of it, and you won't be able to use it. And the only way to fix it is to reboot the game. The stages in Invasions mode are also difficult to navigate. There's no waypoint system or minimap to let you see where you are in relation to everything else. So when you inevitably find yourself needing to backtrack all the way to the beginning of the stage, you are gonna get lost. Because of this, users on Reddit have created mini-maps of their own with all points of interest 
noted for easy reference. Why a feature like this was not in the main game, I have no idea, but NetherRealm Studios should take note and add a similar system into the game. I have Invasion set to very easy mode so that I can get through it as quickly as possible, but I still find it difficult to not rip my hair out. This mode is not fun. It's fucking horrible. NRS, please remove it and add something that's actually good. Locking skins behind such an abysmal mode should be a criminal offense. There are so many other problems with this mode. Why is it that when I get to a node, if I decide that I want to go left, but I accidentally go right? Why is it that I have to wait until my character takes his slow ass all the way to the next node before I can go back to where I actually wanted to go? Everything in this mode is made to be tedious, to annoy you enough to not want to play it so that you instead go to the shop and pay real money to buy the skins that you want. And that brings us to microtransactions. Microtransactions make a return in Mortal Kombat 1 and yes, they are as annoying as ever. You want that cool John claude Van Damme skin? Well, that's gonna be 10 bucks. You want that cool Johnny Cage Indiana Jones skin? You can get it for free in Invasions mode, but who the hell wants to deal with that crap? Just pay 5 bucks and get it instantly. If you have any self-respect, don't buy anything from this shop unless you're a millionaire and can afford to throw money away. As we can see here, the Johnny Cage John claude Van Damme bundle, which is just a bunch of JCVD palette swaps, is gonna run you 1000 crystals, and in order to get dragon crystals, you can earn them in game, but honestly I don't know how, the only reason I know that you can earn them in the game is because because I had 100 dragon crystals for weeks and now I have 200 but I don't know when that happened or how I got them. I assume it involves a ton of tedious grinding that no one wants to do. An easier way to get dragon crystals is to pay real world money so for 1000 crystals that will set you back 10 bucks and that's for one single skin with a few color variations of it. Now let's talk about the gameplay and performance of the Nintendo Switch version of Mortal Kombat 1. As far as the gameplay is concerned, if you ever played a Mortal Kombat game before, you'll know what to expect. But MK1 adds a twist in that you're going to be partnered up with an assist character, or as they're called here, a cameo, who you can use to extend combos to make yourself safe, and if you decide to use the Kung Lao cameo... The cameo system works well enough, but there are some issues where when certain cameos are paired with certain characters, it can make that team very broken and extremely difficult to deal with. For example, if you have a team like Raiden with the Kung Lao cameo, the Kung Lao cameo has a ground projectile technique. Raiden has several overheads, some very unreactable. If you delay the Kung Lao ground projectile, your opponent will be forced to block low, which will leave him open to an overhead that he can do nothing about. There isn't too much I can say about the gameplay aside from a few nitpicks. For one, fatal blows in this game deal way too much damage. In the performance area of the Switch version, things have definitely improved since the big patch a week ago, but loading times before a match and even before a rematch are still excessive. We're looking at 40 second loading times between rematches and even longer before the beginning of a match. Performance in the menus is still kind of slow, and the character selection screen does not seem to have been improved at all. Performance in offline matches is pretty smooth and stable. Fights in invasions mode can chug very badly once other factors like multiple phase fights and stage hazards are introduced. A lot of the bugs and glitches that were present in the Switch version previously were finally fixed in the most recent patch. So Johnny Cage now has facial expressions, Melina's character model was improved, John claude Van Damme's hair is now the correct color, Towers mode performs a little bit better now, that along with numerous other back-end and graphical tweaks to character models. Before the patch, everything in Invasions mode beyond Johnny Cage's mansion was inaccessible but is now fully playable. I might get some heat for this but in my experience, having played Mortal Kombat 11 online for the Nintendo Switch and Mortal Kombat 1 online for the Switch, it is my experience that MK1 is much, much better online than MK11 ever was. MK1 online for the Switch actually feels like rollback, especially after the big patch. I don't know what they did, but whatever they did, it improved the online performance for sure. Now that doesn't mean it's great, there are still some big lag spikes that happen, and I'm sure it still pales in comparison to the online in PS5 and Steam, but it's still among the best online fighting games on the Switch when it comes to the online. Mortal Kombat 11 had this issue on the Switch with crushing blows and fatal blows. Anytime you land one of those in an online match for MK11, the entire game slowed to a crawl 
crawl. I'm not kidding. It went down to probably like 10 frames per second. It was a slideshow, and it happened in every single match. In MK1 for the Switch, I haven't noticed a single instance of that happening without the rest of the match also being extremely slow. And that, thankfully, seems to be fairly rare in this game. I have not run into matches that bad very often. They do happen, but not like an MK11. One thing I forgot to mention about the visuals in Mortal Kombat 1 that does kind of annoy me is the design of the female characters. The Mortal Kombat series has always featured extremely attractive women, that is until now. Every single female character in this game is ugly with a capital U-G-L-Y. It's become a trend in video games lately, a trend that I hope soon comes to an end. So is Mortal Kombat 1 on the Nintendo Switch worth it now after the most recent patch? I would like for this to be a resounding yes, but I don't think that we're there yet. I do think though that if you don't have any other platform to play Mortal Kombat 1 on, then the Switch version, even with its current issues, is still worth it. Personally, the loading times sound terrible, but being someone who has played the Switch version of the game now for well over 200 hours and hundreds of online matches, I can say it isn't really as bad as it sounds. Don't get me wrong, it is still horrible, but waiting 40 seconds between matches is not the end of the world. Having said that, I have to emphasize that this loading times issue has to be fixed as soon as possible. I completely understand if the loading times will never be as good as on the PlayStation 5 and on Steam, I get that but they still have to be improved on the Switch. The way it is now is just not acceptable. So if you have the other platforms, get it on one of the other platforms. If you only have a Switch and you're a big Mortal Kombat fan, then I think there's a lot of fun to be had here. If you're not a fan of Mortal Kombat and you're looking at the Switch version as a potential entry into the series, then my advice would be to steer clear and await for further patches. That's gonna be it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna keep bringing you more online matches, combo videos, and video game news. I'm Switch Played. Done.